For the purposes of art, we're gonna air bite for the purposes of art because our director is telling me to air bite. This is why you should subscribe, all right? What we do for you guys. This is what we do for you. Uh, Here you go. It's a bit of a trip so. I don't even wanna pretend, all right. I, I, that's it, that's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not doing more. I'm out, I'm out. That's it. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Scenic Fights, Fight Scenes Breakdown. I'm Logan Love. And I'm Chad Basquez. Today we're doing part two of our Man From Nowhere Breakdown. This one is the duel between Cha and Ramran in their knife duel. I've actually really been looking forward to this because this is the first time that we really get to go into this new weapon, which has been really popular ever since that film, The Raid, which I hope we're gonna review at some point in the future. No, for sure, but before we get to that, please like, subscribe to the channel, and of course, leave comments below on future scenes that you would like to see us break down. Please, stay until the very end because we're gonna give a grade to it. We're giving a grade to the applications of the weapon. Not the acting, not the characters, just the applications of their fighting styles. All right, it's duel time. I'm excited about this. Probably a little too excited. Ooh, Ramran's out with his karambit. So he kicks out the karambit, little flail. Okay, and there's a problem right there. Let's talk about it. If you look closely at the type of karambit that he takes out, it is a single-edged karambit. But he opens up with a number two. Note what's happening here. I'm attacking Cha with the blunt edge of the weapon. That does not make sense for someone that is as trained as Ramran should have been. Because that is a tremendous risk that he's taking. He's coming in, he's exposing himself, for what? What's he gaining from that? Hitting him with the blunt edge? Well, that's just gonna annoy someone like Cha. It's definitely not gonna kill him. If I'm gonna do that, why don't I use the karambit for what it's for? I take it out and I do a flail. Oh, why'd you move back, Chad? It was quick, kind of. It was quick yeah. and it was gonna hit you. That is one of the benefits of using a karambit. Because of the retention ring, you can get an extension of almost 100% of the whole weapon. So here, Chad, stay where you are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lunge. Maybe I clip you. Maybe I scratch him. Maybe I'll hit the clavicle. Million to one shot. But here, if I'm going here, bam, I'm definitely hitting that clavicle. I'm definitely hitting something. Is it worth all of that effort and all that energy and all that danger and risk to me? I don't know. It's a judgment call. By the way, all of this goes away if it's a double-edged karambit. If I come in and I'm here and I lunge and it's a double-edged karambit, it makes a difference, right? Maybe I can clip him with just the edge. Personally, I don't think that someone as skilled and as trained as someone as Ramran is supposed to be in character would have done something like that. That doesn't ring true to me. Continues, all right, good block. Okay, attack, attack, okay. Cha does something interesting in this scene. He does what we call a number four knife attack. It's interesting because there are schools out there that don't believe that there, such a thing exists, and I'll show you why. Cha comes in with an attack, he's blocked by Ramran, who basically passes him, and they come in with his own attack, which Cha answers by throwing what we call a number four knife attack. There's a Tuhan named Tuhan Tim Wade. He says that there is no number four knife attack. And I think it makes sense. A number one attack is like this from the right side. Number two from the left side. Number three is from the right side up. But you'll note that a number four attack, there's no way for me to safely do it without putting my elbow in danger. Chad, I'm actually gonna try to hit you. Okay. And then I'm gonna see if I can hit you without you hitting me first. Yeah, I don't believe that's possible. I agree, I don't believe a number four knife attack is actually possible. It makes sense with a longer blunt weapon because of the length of the weapon. Quick question. Yeah. Does it make a difference if he's using karate? That's a good question. Again, I think it's kind of risk reward. Let's, let's try it slowly. If okay. I'm coming in here and you do the attack, I mean, maybe I would do it knowing that he has a single edge weapon, knowing that he can't slice me. But again, what am I trying to accomplish here? Am I, Am I, am I thinking I'm gonna hurt him? I'm definitely not gonna kill him. What would probably make more sense is again to progress. So I'm here, I launch the failed attack. He passes me. He comes in with his attack. I wanna stop his attack. I've stopped his attack now. I've flanked him and now I start my progression. Here, I start the quartering. This is a very classic and small scene that I really loved. I really loved this part of it. In this scene, Ramran is coming in with number three attack with the Karambit. There's a block and a pass, and now Cha is in a classic attack position where he can simply thrust down. Exactly, so Ramran does the right thing. He doesn't step back so much as he just gets his leg out of the way. 
Notice that he's not changed his position in the world in a negative way. He's still in a forward position, able to attack without retreating. We'll do the same thing with a big retreat, so you mm -hmm. can come in. Here, boom, he does a big retreat, he's stepping back. He's now lost and now I'm pressing the attack. Ramarin did the correct thing. He merely stepped back and was right back in the fight. Very quick, very small, very elegant. Ooh, nice pass, cut, cut. Oh, he's using punches too? With the, the it looks like they're losing punches, which is, which is what you should be doing. Defending, good lock. Okay, that was interesting. Chad does what's called a four wall block with a knife. So he's basically blocking with a knife. I don't know how realistic that is. Uh, let's try it out. Sure, let's go. As Ramarin comes in with his attack, he stops him. I didn't see in the video a hand. Notice that by stopping the blade, uh, there's nothing to keep Ramarin from punching him in the face. Yeah, that's gonna happen. I'm still gonna eat it. If I was going to do this, and it's called the four wall block, I would have to block the blade and the hand to make it effective. You'll note though that I haven't advanced my place in the world. I'm still in the blender. I feel that this was a director's choice because the melee scene was so good. What I probably would have done to advance my place in the world is he comes in here, I see that, I'm here. And now I've progressed the fight to my advantage. Good. They're too straight on, you think? Yeah, they're too straight on. I think that's the Hollywood aspect of it, or rather the producing aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, break it down. Ooh, good flail. First time I've seen that. In this scene is the first time that we see what's called the flail. So a flail is when you spin the knife out. Chad, let's, let's show them how it's done. Ramarin uses the karambit for what its purpose is for. One of the hallmarks of a karambit is this retention ring. It has some unique properties to it. Let's take a look. As I do some sort of attack backhand, I'm Ramarin. Right now, Cha has grabbed my hand. Note what I can do. All I can do is release the weapon and flick it up. I've now cut his palm, forcing him to let go. The amount of force that's necessary is extremely little. Chad, I'm sorry, it's gonna hurt a little bit. All right? All for senior fights. Let's All do this. for senior fights. The things we do for you guys. All right, All right, here we go. He grabs, and then I immediately let go and I hit. Yeah. Did that hurt? Yeah. That's a good paper. That was yeah. definitely a hurt. Now imagine if that was an edged, sharp weapon. I'm clearly cutting something. That is the first time that I've seen in this scene where Ramarin is using the karambit as a karambit. Interesting. Finger lock. Well, we'll need to talk about that. And he's gonna do what's called a small circle manipulation. He's gonna come in here. I feel I can still slash. Yeah. Even if Chad did it with more strength and more power, I still have the weapon here. Especially if I know that my life is at stake, I feel that I would be willing to allow my finger to break. You so, see a lot of times in combat sports, yeah. I think for sure a trained combatant that knows that it's life and death. Go again, Chad. Yeah, yeah there's no way. I'm, I'm cutting stuff. I'm gonna break my finger. I'm gonna break my left finger and allow him to break my left finger so long as I have my right weapon hand engaged and ready to roll. Oh, he does a switch. Knife manipulation. Good, coming in. Eviscerating. Oh, Ooh, yeah. He's angry. He has anger issues right now. Dude. One thing that someone has to do in the heat of battle is to decide whether or not it's worth it to do manipulation. Here, Cha is closing in the distance between him and Ramrin. So he makes a decision to switch his knife grip. He switched it from hammer grip to an ice pick grip. There's always a chance that you can drop the knife. You don't want to do it when you're fighting and you don't want to do it when you're, it's a life and death situation. However, just as we said in the John Wick video, I guess he wanted that greater power that's generated by the ice pick grip. So he comes in and he switches it from a hammer grip to an ice pick grip and attacks that way. Coming in. Good. All right, yeah. Oop, there's nice. the bite. Much better than under siege. That's what, that's what Seagal should have done. <laughs> I grabbed a knife yeah, that with was the mouth. Done. All right, here he goes. Uh, oh, I think there goes Ramron. He's done. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the way you want to go. Yeah. Especially with that look. So you're looking at the guy you're killing like that. I mean, I'd, okay, knife's down. All right, there you go. Thank you. That was kind of nah, kind of weird. Here we have an interesting contrast between the, the scene that we did in Under Siege and this scene. And if you haven't seen our breakdown of Under Siege, definitely go click that after you've seen this video and you'll see what we're talking about and what not to do. So in the final battle between Cha and Ramran, Cha has come in and he's had his arm gripped by Ramran. Now, he uses his left hand to block, but he makes a conscious decision 
to bite the hand. This standoff makes sense. Why? I'm literally locked in place because my teeth are around his wrist. He's locked in place because he has to prevent himself from getting stabbed. Now, the person with the greater force wins. Who has the greater force? Cha has the greater force. We have one arm and two arms against one arm. Chad, you're gonna pretend I'm biting your arm. I want you to prevent me from touching your chest. Yep, okay. All right, here we go. Yeah. Okay. There's no way that's not gonna happen. That scene made total sense. Thank you so much for recommending The Man From Nowhere. I love this film. The melee scene was phenomenal, perfect. There are some deficiencies and it really comes down to Raman. The main thing is he didn't use the karambit in ways that would have advanced his position. In other words, the retention ring. He did one flail, that was it. He could have done some knuckle dusting, which is what Doug Mercator calls um, hitting with the ring portion of the karambit. Could have sliced more with it upwards, done it more captures. The curved nature of the karambit means that he could have captured more. He could have caused damage while putting himself into a safer position. He could have extended his reach with a flail. None of these things were really apparent in this duel. So I felt that it didn't ring true to his character. If Ramon is a trained operative who chooses to use a karambit, he would have known to knuckle dust. He would have known to do an extended flail. He would have known to cut up more rather than do the backhand attacks. Cha's role in this scene was also not perfect. In the melee scene, he's doing the proper thing. He's attacking extremities. We didn't see that in this duel. And it doesn't make sense, right? The more dangerous your assailant is, the more careful you have to be. Ramran is essentially Cha's equal. These are two very skilled, very careful people. I don't understand why they would headhunt, why they would body hunt when the hand's available for them. The more dangerous a person is, the more unwilling I would be to engage more of my body against more of their body. I would want to keep back and attack the extremities as much as possible. I feel that that is a director's choice here because honestly, two trained assailants, one's gonna be better than the other and the fight's gonna end fairly quickly with weapons. Because of that, it wasn't for me as excellent a scene as the melee scene was. I give it a B plus. It's still a great scene, it's still wonderful, it's good. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, definitely subscribe to the Scenic Fights YouTube channel for more videos. If you wanna find out more about my school, the information is in the description below. Finally, if you wanna find out more about the Karambit, there's a great article written by my instructor's instructor, Bill McGrath, and that's gonna be available in the link below. Let us know what other scenes we should review in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. All right, bye.